Alright, so, once again, excuse the mess here. Um, we have made a little bit more progress now on our carriage system. Uh, so, once again, we have the Batwiz and Fords sliding motion there. Um, I think on the last update we've done the side to side. Okay, so um, what's happened now is I've run some. Oh, on our platform plates here, I've got two of those there. Uh, one of them is going to have the pneumatic cylinder, the one on the bottom is going to have the pneumatic cylinder on the bottom there, like that. Um, the top plate will mount to the top of this pneumatic cylinder here. Um, running down the centre here, I don't know if you can actually see that, but I've got a length of uh, 16 mil threaded rod. Um, there's going to be a bolt welded to the bottom one so that as you turn the threaded rod the bottom plate will slide up. Uh, you'll obviously then see here that I've made um, the structure for our z-axis there with just some 10 mil plate. Uh, I've got two flat ones across the front here and two side ones sort of boxing that in with a gap in between. I'll bring you around this side so you might be able to see that a bit better. Okay, that gives you a better indication of what's happening here. So you can see here the threaded rod on the inside. Um, there's a gap in here of around about 51, 52 millimetres, um, which is good because actually, I didn't actually check this, but that worked out lucky. Um, so what you've got here is Here's the 10 mil plate, you'll see they slide up and down there like that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm planning on doing then is on this top plate, this top plate here, I've got another section of 10 mil plate that I'm going to screw to the front of that, so that will slide up and down like so. Um, and then off of this plate, I'll make some sort of brackets that will hold the uh, injection module um, and then uh, fingers crossed the whole contraption will move up and down and move our module up and down the z-axis there like that so there we go so we've got backwards and forwards side to side and now up and down I'll also show you in more detail once I've done um, just like I've got these the 12 mil rods down here. Just as I use these 12 mil rods um, with linear bearings to give us movement on the inside of this section on, on the back here, I'm also going to be mounting uh, a couple more of those. And I did have one almost ready to go. Of course, in this mess, I can't find it, but on the inside of these plates, they're going to be mounted on the inside in here. I know you can't really see that. Um, with so uh, with another 12 mil rod either side that'll hold these in position. So I'll uh, bring you back once that's done. All right. So I thought I'd take you off the tripod to give you a bit of a look around uh, where we're at so far with our machine. And there it is in the background. Um, so if I take you in a bit closer, uh, that's what we're looking at at the moment. Um, you can see in here, I've got the threaded rod running through here, running down through this plate to the bottom here. Um, so I've just welded a nut onto this plate here. Um, this plate on top is just loose at the moment because that's going to be attached to the uh, or risen and uh, lowered by the pneumatic cylinder. That threaded rod goes all the way up here. Um, you can see on top there we've got uh, a nut here. I've just uh, tacked a couple of welds on there to hold that onto the end of the rod. Um, we've got a couple of rod holders there 
uh, I still need to do some work on. I'll show you around on this side here. Um, you can see I've got two of those 12 mil bars on this side. I know the lighting's not the best that run all the way down and through both of the plates. This point here and this point here, so you can see these slide up and down like that. And uh, in between these two plates is where we're going to have um, the pneumatic cylinder. The cylinder that I'm putting in there again is going to be this one here. So it will go in between these two plates here. Um, so the way this works obviously now is that if we get our socket we put a uh, 24mm socket on top there like that put the ratchet in on a uh, come up with a more permanent handle solution and then we can uh, turn this uh, and as you see down here that as the handle turns the it raises those plates. Obviously being such a fine thread on that threaded rod will take forever. I may end up putting a motor on that. It really annoys me too much but um, anyway so I'll step back and show you where we're at so far. Still looking a bit of a mess at the moment but uh, that's where we're at at the moment. So. The next step, I think I'm not entirely happy with this arrangement up here. These rods are just sitting free at the bottom there. So I'm going to uh, fix these bottom, the bottom rods of the rods down this end next. Um, once that's done, I'll work on fitting that pneumatic cylinder in between these two plates. And I'll bring you back once that's done. Alright, so I've made a little bit of progress off camera. Where are we? Here, Wayne. Uh, made a little bit of progress off camera. So I'll just uh, bring up the speed uh, with where we're at now. Um, you can see here, uh, this is our upright Z axis, and I've now fitted the uh, our lift ram, I guess you'd call it, in here um, to, to the bottom plate here. So that this is the sliding plate that. that uh, it goes, sorry, not the sliding plate, but the plate that uh, has the nuts welded to it to go up and down on the threaded rod that was in the middle. Um, so I've just welded an upright plate in here with a hole through the middle to take the pin on the bottom of the cylinder. Um, and you'll also see here I've also drilled a hole in the top plate for the, uh, the ram to fit in the top plate there. Um, now the other thing I'll show you, I've just got this rigged up to test at the moment is the, uh, the levers that I've got. Now if you look at these levers, I think they're uh, full of crap actually. I think they're um, a two-way lever. Now if you're doing a project like this, don't, don't buy these. Um, you want the slightly larger ones that will ha have four or five ports. Um, the reason being I found out uh, once I ordered these that these are actually only good for one direction on your ram so you can use one to either push it up or down you can't use one to push it up and down um, which obviously gave me a bit of a, a dilemma because I'd ordered three of these off eBay uh, from China um, and uh, to get the larger ones even coming from China you're looking at it's not a lot of money but it was uh, I think it was around about uh, $25 each for the larger ones with more ports um, so uh, whereas these were actually only I think $7.50 each or something with postage from China so rather than buying $75 worth of, of the larger ones what I ended up doing was um, I thought well if one of these um, will move it in one direction and I need a second one to move it in the other direction then can I just clamp two together and use two per cylinder and that's basically what I've done so I've ordered 
uh, three more of these to give me three pairs of two for the, th the, th the um, three rooms that I'm using. So I, I've rigged this up purely as a as a test only. Um, I'll show you here what I did was um, I just took a piece of aluminium uh, bar, um, drilled a couple of holes in it, um, the same diameter as the lever shaft and then split it down the middle and put a couple of screws in there so that it acts as like a bar clamp to clamp the two together and so when I eventually mount it in my control panel um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have this on top or underneath it's leaking a little bit at the moment because I haven't I haven't put uh, thread tape on there but um, so now I've got one controlling up and one controlling down and with these two clamped together it, it acts as one lever um, so I'll just show you there so you can see the ram behind so at the moment it's uh, there we go down I push it forward and it goes up so remember um, and that's only on about 35 psi and I cannot push that down so um, uh, and if I push it down, I cannot lift that on about 35 psi, which is really good. I'm just using the regulator on the compressor at the moment. Um, I will eventually have a, a separate regulator for each RAM fitted here so I can adjust them as need be. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. And, of course, the most important project, part of this project is the fact that it, it actually goes... Push, push. <laughs> what you want psh, psh, sound um, so yeah no, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that um, so as I said I've got uh, three more of these levers coming I'll do another one of this sort of setup and obviously mount it a little bit more permanently um, now that's not obviously the whole uh, uh, capacity of the, of the Z axis because it does this whole apparatus can move all the way up to the top and all the way down again um, to allow for larger moulds. Um, all, all that this is actually doing it's going to be that give the final um, drop into the port on the mould and, um, and hold it there securely um, and keep the plastic in there under load. So that's that part now the other bit of progress that I've made is round the front here, so I'll take you round. Now it's a little bit dark so I apologise for that but what I've done is um, this plate here, this plate here, um, it's a 10mm plate I welded to this top bracket here um, and these two 10mm plates here um, I've um, drilled and tapped those so that they're screwed in from behind so they'll actually be removable. Um, and this is the first part of the apparatus that's going to actually hold um, the injection ram on there. Um, I've made on the ram itself, um, um, you'll see here, I just made a couple of clamps using um, some aluminium plate. It's about a 10mm thick uh, plate that I happen to have in my scrap bin. Um, so all I really did with those, um, the top one needs a little bit of finessing still, but... All I really did with those is I used a hole saw to um, cut the, the hole out in the middle. Um, I then to split them across both sides with the angle grinder to give me a top and a bottom. Um, and then just drilled and tapped a couple of holes in there, M5 holes, and put a couple of uh, uh, bolts in there top and bottom um, they are not moving that is it, it will hold that without any problem whatsoever even though this is quite weighty so I'm rather happy with that um, I've just got to tickle this a little bit to, to get it to for a snugger fit because um, I didn't have a hole saw the exact diameter of this pipe it was a, about two millimeters smaller um, so the next part of this process is going to be to complete mounting this onto here. Um, I'm 
I'm still a little bit undecided as to how um, exactly I'm going to do that. Whether I'll... I don't really think I'll... I was thinking I could just drill into these 10mm plates and tap and screw that on there, but I'm actually thinking I might weld an extra plate under here just so it's a little bit beefier, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. So I'll give that some thought. Um, the other thing that I want to do next um, is I want to put some sort of um, set screws um, into each of the carriages uh, somehow that will that once I've got got the carriage in position across the X and the Y I can tighten those up and the, the whole apparatus then will be uh, fixed in position um, so that the only thing will, that will be moving obviously is the uh, in injection module up and down um, as, as I um, fill and then remove each um, casting from the mould. So that's about it for now so I'll uh, figure out this arrangement and uh, I'll bring you back once I start work on that. Okay, so the way I decided to do this was I, uh, I took the plates off of here, the one on the top and the bottom I had on the front here, and uh, I'll just show you here what I ended up doing. Um, so I've welded two plates, uh, just some 10 mil plate, top and bottom. You can see that there. Uh, this one actually goes this way, so I probably should have done those the other way around, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, and so this one, the one on top faces that way and this one will face this way underneath um, and then what's, what I've done is I've got uh, two holes in here which are tapped with an M5 thread um, as with everything else and then what will happen is um, once this is mounted on that should be able to sit in there and then I'll be able to put two screws either side that will just apply pressure to this plate, they don't actually go into the aluminium they should just apply pressure and hold that there so we'll mount this all up and see how we go alright there we go that's nice and secure there's a little bit of play in it this way but that's just from within the slider we don't think that's going to be a problem um, obviously once the nozzle locates down the bottom into the mould it's not going to be an issue um, so the next test really is to see how the ram, actually I could probably take a little bit of play out of that, um, see how the ram handles lifting it, and we'll see how that goes, it's still only set to 35 psi. a couple of washers in here too so it was easy for this to move up and down I really don't think it's going to be an issue down at this end alright I'm calling that good progress I'll leave it there for now